Hi everybody, my name is Nairo Virica and I need to stop introducing my videos lightly. It's so pretentious. I'm gonna try and make a banjo out of musical instruments that would otherwise be kind of bad. So I had this really tiny electric guitar from first act, which was fun and cute. I still have the body and the pickups and the bridge and whatnot, but it just, it didn't play very well. And the reason it sucked is because it was a really tiny size guitar that was made to function like a full size guitar. I find that a lot of these little miniature guitars, they're fun and you can play chords on them, but the tension on the strings is usually really really bad so you either have to tune it up really really high which can be useful on its own or you have to get really thick gauge strings and when they're small instruments generally their necks are already pretty small so if you start having to increase the size of the strings you're losing spacing in between those strings and just kind of losing fretboard plus it means you have to rework the nuts which is always an annoying process so i thought it would be fun to make sort of a banjo-esque instrument. I don't know if it'll be exactly like a banjo that is short scale. Banjos generally have much longer necks than this, but I thought it could be fun. And the biggest fun about it is this neck is from a first act guitar, but this thing over here, which I believe is one of the rack toms off a first act kit, um, is also a first act thing. So it'd be kind of funny to take a guitar neck off a first act guitar and a drum off a first act kit and try and turn them into a completely different instrument. But obviously the first thing that I have to do is remove the drum from the thing that I have it on right now because this was actually my kick drum for my electronic kit for a while because I thought it would be cool to have an actual drum. But I realized because this is an acoustic drum it was very loud, so I couldn't play my electronic drums at night, which is one of the reasons I got an electronic drum kit to begin with, because they're smaller, and therefore I can actually have it set up in my room on occasion, but they're also quieter. But with an acoustic drum as a trigger for the kick pedal, it's suddenly not really fully electronic anymore. So it's being repurposed. I'm going to probably have to get new tension rods for it, because these ones are incredibly long and either i get new ones or i get myself a thread and tap thing and i just tap the rest of the rod i guess we'll see how it goes i might even have some bolts around that could be used as tension rods but i'll probably get myself some new ones but that said the plan is for me to remove apps trucks <laughs> the plan is to remove absolutely everything from this drum so it's just a raw barrel of wood and uh, I have to decide whether I want to remove the frets on this before cutting it down to shape or if I want to try and cut it with the frets on. Because I'm going to be reshaping this. This is a bit wide. I would like to make a three or four stringed instrument, which means to make it look and feel a little bit more like a banjo, I can't just attach this neck to it. I want to actually shape this neck and turn it into something a little bit more well suited for the project. everything together and maybe I won't lose it lose something
Oh, that's ugly. Okay, so I got everything off the drum itself. The hoop, the custom denim skin that I made for it, as well as the lugs and tension rods. I haven't done anything to the neck just yet because I don't want to jump too far ahead in this project. But the plan here is to actually take this piece of wood and somehow attach it to this. I'll probably sand and glue it. Um, but from what I understand, banjos actually have a bit of an acoustic guitar heel on the neck so that it can not only be bolted to the side of the instrument, but also so a rod can run through the entirety of the instrument. And I don't know the exact purpose of that rod, but I think it's so that when the neck is attached to the instrument, it's less likely to do this. Because if it's just mounted there, it might start wobbling around. And even though there'd be a big block here, it is actually going to be end grain to the side of the instrument, which means the chances of that tearing kind of go up. If it was gonna be bolted on this way, I wouldn't worry about it so much, but this way, if the screws tend to be wobbled around, it could actually split the layers and the neck would just come straight off and with string tension and playing and possible dropping and temperature fluctuation, whatever that could happen. So I'd like to have some sort of supporting rod running through the instrument. Now, one of my big concerns was the fact that this neck has this sort of curve to it here, which would be fine if it was being bolted on the inside, but it's not, it's being bolted on the inside. And I don't have anything to actually like sand this curvature into it, but I do have things that could sand this flat. And this actually happens to have a flat spot right here, which means, that if I were to sand that neck flat, it would actually sit right up against that pretty well, which isn't like a huge, you know, thing that could make this better because I do have to think about the fact that there's going to be a drum hoop on top of this, which means this neck is actually gonna have to sit on top of this hoop somehow. And the only way I can think of doing that is to either cut away part of the hoop, which I really don't want to do, or cutting more of this neck material away so the fretboard can overhang it just a little bit, which means you're going to have to cut and measure the profile of this drum hoop overhang to cut into the neck. It's going to be a whole situation, but I think that I could make it work. I think for now what I need to do is take some measurements and figure out how deep I can actually make this body because I don't want it to be this thick. This is way too thick unless I was looking for a lot of acoustic transfer. This is way too big of a body to be playing in my lap. So I'm going to want to trim it down a little bit and I want to maintain this side. So I'm probably going to be cutting away from this side because I want the original lug positions to stay where they are because these actually have a clip on them here for a plastic piece that actually snaps onto the back of the body, which uh, I don't really know why I'd want to keep that piece there, but I might actually trace out a piece of something else. And having these clips there to put a back on it will not only make it a little bit quieter to play indoors or change the tone of the instrument if I really want to, but it also means that if I do put electronics in it, like a piezo and an output jack, having these clips means an easily removable back to access the electronics if I need to fix anything or I want to change something down the line. So there's a lot to think about and the biggest thing is these lugs. I need to know how far down they can go. One of the issues that I'm running into with the lugs is that this plastic clip system that's in here actually serves a purpose but it also makes one of the other purposes not function exactly as I'd want them to. And the first purpose is to keep that insert for the tension rod in place. But while it's in there, I can only tighten this tension rod to a certain point, And that certain point is about right here, hand tight. And if I tighten it anymore, it could strip it out or it could potentially blow this plastic out. 
which neither of those situations are uh, preferable. So I have to find some way to get this tension rod to go in a little bit deeper. Now I could actually cut, th cut this on this threads halfway because the threads on this are pretty long. So let's see here. If I place that there and I bring this to its absolute maximum thread in point, but leaving a little bit of overhang, I could technically cut this till about right here, which realistically is about, I don't know, there, I guess. So I could take like an inch and a half off. Obviously I need to measure this more properly indoors with the proper tools and use a guide to make sure that mark is the same distance from this edge all the way around. And then I need to cut one of these lugs down to size, put the rim back on and see if it works. And if I can get things to tighten up to, uh, you know, at least some sort of musical note, like I'm tuning a drum, then I'll call it good. But the reason I decided to do this video in the short format is because this is going to be a fairly big project, even though I am, you know, doing something a bit easier than the last thing that I did. Anyways, thank you guys for hanging out with me today while I start another musical instrument project. I have made some other prototype instruments before off camera for fun, but I thought it might be time with the experience I have now to actually do a video about it. But again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys next time. Maybe it'll be next week. Maybe it'll be uh, six years from now. Who knows? We'll see.